Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Well, time is precious. We had a very large uh, tornado go through our community recently. And what I hear, no one died from it. Uh, a lot of property damage. Uh, I know I went by a quarter of a mile from my house. Life is precious. Life can come and be gone right now. We, we all are, are waiting on death. We all will die one day. Take our last breath and our living soul will either be with Jesus or the bad place. And it's a wake up call for all of us. We could die right now today. I could pass out right here. Mark will try to do CPR and the guy says no, it'll happen. And folks, life is precious. The reason it's precious is because Jesus Christ died on the cross for your sins and mine. Are you excited about that? We fix to celebrate something in a couple of weeks. You better be excited that Jesus died for me, for your sins. Jesus paid the ultimate price. That's our message today to look at that. If you would turn with me to Hebrews, book of Hebrews, chapter 8. There's a you know, quote, uh, I think I had it. Greater love in no man than this, that a man lay down his life for his friends. No greater love. Jesus spoke that. And if you take that and uh, put it in our life as a Christian, Jesus is not only our, our Lord, our Master, our Mediator, He's our friend. What a friend we have in Jesus. Jesus died for you. You know, you hear this term in a lot of areas, uh, military especially. You die for your friends. Jesus died for you. He died for me. We need to be excited about that celebration that comes once a year. Resurrection morning. And I hope that you are excited. Wow. Jesus died for my sins. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, Lord, we love you. Lord Jesus, we thank you for dying on that cross and just loving us anyway. God, I pray for this congregation today. That their hearts will be open to your living word and but whatever their, their walk with you, whether it's a need of salvation, need of rededication, a, a stronger faith, that, Lord, I pray for them. I lift every soul up here, especially mine. God, that you'll convict our hearts of the need of change, of repentance, need of more devotion to you and the, the call of Jesus to be fishers of men. <clears throat> God, now as we begin reading this word, that this message will unfold in each of our hearts. And, they will convict our hearts. And, and Lord, uh, I pray we we'll all get excited now that we will celebrate what Jesus did on a cross for our sins. Precious name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. No big of Hebrews, uh, a lot of skeptics and all, uh, that there's no real, we say, person who wrote it. No one really knows. A lot of scholars think it was the Apostle Paul, but. Regardless, this is God's word. This is his living word. Uh, Hebrews is is uh, kind of a letter. Uh, you know, he goes into a lot of things. That, uh, who was writing to, to God's people, so to speak? Uh, uh, he set aside uh, Moses is great, but not as good as Jesus. Melchizedek, the high priest, was just as good, but not as good as Jesus. These priests, these high priests, we have doing these ritual ceremonies that do away with sin. They're not good as Jesus. Jesus is the top. He is the top. He is the mediator. And Hebrews explains that. But in chapter 8, if you would begin reading with me. Uh, uh, Hebrews chapter 8. Now these things which we have spoken, this is the song. We have such a high priest who is set on the right hand of the throne of the majesty in heaven. And think about that. This is talking about Jesus. We know uh, in the book of Acts, uh, you know, uh, the first martyr in the Bible, as he was dying as a stoning to death, Stephen, he looked up in the spiritual realm and he saw Jesus there next to God on the throne. 
A minister of the sanctuary in the true tabernacle, which is the Lord pitched, not man. For every high priest is ordained to other gifts and sacrifices. Wherefore it is of necessity that this man has somewhat also to offer. For if he were on earth, he should not be a priest, seeing that there are priests that are offered gifts according to the law. Who serve to the example and the shadow of the heavenly things as Moses was admonished of God. And when he was about to make the tabernacle. We see that he that thou makest all things according to the pattern showed to thee this mount. But now hath he obtained a more excellent ministry. And by now how much also he is the mediator of a better covenant, which was established upon better promises. Well, that's a lot of words. Whoever wrote this, a lot of people believe it's Paul. Just the transitioning between these sentences and, and you start, what, what exactly is going on? What is, and we're fixing to get into it. It's a transition from the old covenant to the new covenant. New covenant is Jesus Christ. Do we live by faith now? We'll be living through what Jesus did on the cross. As we begin going through this, uh, the next few verses is, is a little different translation. We have two different languages from the Old Testament to the New, but he's quoting Jeremiah. Chapter 31, verses 31 through 34. So we begin in verse 7 here. For if that first covenant had been faultless, then should no place have been sought for the second. For finding fault with him, he saith, Behold, the days come, saith the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and with the house of Judah. Not according to the covenant that I made with their fathers in the day when I took them by the hand and led them out of the land of Egypt. Because they continue not in my covenant, and I regard them not, saith the Lord. For this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days, saith the Lord. I will put my laws in their mind, and write them in their hearts, and I will be to them a God, and they shall be to me my people. And they shall not teach every man his neighbor, and every man his brother, saying, Know the Lord, for all shall know me, from the least to the greatest. For I will be merciful to their unrighteousness and their sins and their iniquities will I remember no more. And that he saith a new covenant he hath made the first old. Now that which decayeth that waxeth old is ready to vanish away. So we're going from a old covenant to a new covenant. I think I have another slide coming up. Uh, this would be the picture of the high priest. Now here's a, a model of a, a temple. The Holy of Holiest. Uh, the, the curtain behind this high priest is the Ark of the Covenant. And he went there regularly to do daily sacrifices. Uh, you know, the, the animal dies, uh, the blood, the sprinkling, the praying. The, the old way, uh, once a year, he'd go to the Holiest of Holies. And uh, this high priest would make atonement for the sins of the people one time. Well, folks, that's what Jesus put into the New Covenant. He dies once and only once. And all those who believe and look to the cross of Jesus for salvation, it's done. It's a done deal. You belong to Jesus now. It's your Lord, your shepherd. We go down to Hebrews chapter 9. We again talking about the, the slide there, the, the place. Uh, you know, uh, when Jesus died on the cross, that holy temple there, that curtain was ripped right down. Jesus prophesied, and it did happen. That's recorded through other history besides the Bible history. And, and God did away with that way. You know, Apostle Paul tells you that the, the laws, the rules, the regulation, the Old Covenant, the Old Testament showed us that we can't live by the law. We're going to fail. How many of y'all sinned this week? I don't see enough hands. How many of you made God disappoint with you this week? How many of you made the Lord Jesus Christ a little shameful that, that uh, you didn't do what he expects you to do? Folks, it's okay. If you thought about that and you repented in your heart, it's gone. That's what's great about Jesus Christ. He does away with all that stuff. Just humble your heart. Admit you're a sinner. And every day is a clean slate. Every day is a new day. If you have Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. 
chapter 9, we, we, we're getting into a few things. Uh, uh, talking about the old covenant sanctuary, the, the new one, the, the sacrifice. And, you know, God has always required death. You know, you, you go back to Adam and Eve. He made them animal furs to put on their clothes. Uh, you know, we, we start seeing Abraham uh, doing animal sacrifices. Noah's, Noah did it after Noah's ark and his honor. God requires death and blood. Why? I don't know. We'll find out one day when we all get up to heaven. We, at, Royce, we can ask God all these stuff when we get back to heaven. When we get there one day. If you begin reading chapter 9, then verily the first covenant had also ordinance of divine service, the worldly sanctuary. For there was a tabernacle made. The first therein was the candlestick and the table and the shoe bread, which is called the sanctuary. And after the second veil, the tabernacle, which is called the holiest of all, which had a golden censer and the Ark of the Covenant overlaid around about with gold, wherein was the golden pot that had the manner of the bread. Aaron's rod budded in the tables of the covenant, and over it were the cherubims, the uh, figures of, of angels, glory shadowing the, the mercy seat of which we cannot speak particularly or in detail. It was like the, the image we just had up there. This is the old way. They had a high priest. Uh, if, you, if you study, a uh, high priest had to go through a ritual before he even went into the temple, cleansing, the submersion of water, new clothes, and then he walks in and he does uh, the services. And uh, You know, if we, we start thinking about these things, uh, wow, God loves me anyway. Could you imagine dying for somebody? Give your life for some stranger, somebody you don't know? Jesus did. Jesus died for you. He died for me. To set us free from the sinful nature we struggle with every day. We see the verse 6. We, we, we start looking at the, the, the sacrifice itself. It says, Now when these things were thus ordained, the priests went always in the first tabernacle. So there's two parts of it. Accomplishing the service of God. But in the second, went the high priest alone once every year. Not without blood, meaning that there's going to be a blood sacrifice, which he offered for himself and for the heirs of the people. The Holy Ghost, this sanctifying that the, the way into the holiest of all was not yet made manifest. While as the first tabernacle, tabernacle was yet standing, which was a figure of the time then present, which were offered both gifts and sacrifices, that could not make him that did the service perfect as pertaining to the conscience. So you got a human being, a sinner, doing these sacrifices. But now the new covenant, we have Jesus Christ, sinless, the perfect sacrifice, got on the cross. And we, we see this figure of crosses, and he was the perfect Lamb of God who died for your sins. Nothing else to say is he died for your sins. All you got to do is believe and accept him. Verse 9 says, which was a figure for the time then present. Again, we, we offered both gifts and sacrifices that could not be made or make him that did the service perfect and pertaining to the, the conscience of made it complete uh, thinking about these things. Verse 10 says, which stood only in meats and drinks and divers or, or various washings and carnal ordinances imposed on them until the time of reformation. Verse 11, but Christ became a, a high priest of good things to come. By a greater and more perfect tabernacle, not made with hands, that is to say, not of this building. So first we, we see a transition of physical eye contact, physical touching, physical things, to a spiritual world. A world with God, with Jesus, with the Holy Ghost. We see this transformation, the, the, the new covenant, the new sacrifice, verse 12, says, Neither by the blood of goats. And calves, by his own blood, he entered in once into a holy place, having obtained eternal redemption for us. For if the blood of bulls and the goats and the ashes of a heifer, sprinkling the unclean, sanctify to the purifying of the flesh, how much more shall the blood of the Christ, who through the eternal Spirit offered himself without spot to God, purge your conscience, cleanse your mind from dead works to serve the living God? And you can go through this Bible and you start reading all these sacrifices and, and 
Some of it you think, man, this is terrible. Whoa, this, this, I don't want anyone to read this. But that was the way God had planned it. Uh, there has to be death. There has to be blood. There has to be a, a physical awakening that you can see, that can believe that that has been done to, to various sin types. Again, Jesus ended this old way of doing things. Jesus became the new covenant, the new mediator. Verse 15 says, And for, for this cause, He is the mediator of the New Testament, that by means of death for the redemption of the transgressions that were under the First Testament, they which are called might receive the promise of eternal inheritance. Grasp that. Put it in your heart. Just hold on to that. That's, that's what it's all about. That's why we're here at church today. That's why we can sit here freely being sin forgiven. Not sin free. There's a lot of religions and things that I've been around. People don't think they sin every day or, or they do some ritual at church and so they don't have to worry about sin no more. That's false religion, people. You and I sin every day, whether we mean to or not. Whether we even think about it, we sin every day. God put an end to all that. We don't have to worry about no high priest, some preacher. All we got to worry about is our heart. God, forgive me. God, I understand. You know, one of my prayers that I just got to do is, is, God, I don't even know what I've done today, if I, what kind of sins or thoughts or things. God, forgive me is the things I don't know what to do. I pray you pray that also. That covers it all. God, forgive me of the things I don't know what I've done. Now when we have grace, we have his mercy. That's what Jesus did. We could talk to God openly. Openly talk to God. And have that peace. My sins are forgiven. That's what it's about, folks. Verse 16. For where a testament is, there must also of necessity be the death of the tester. For a testament is a force after men are dead. Otherwise, it is of no strength in all while the tester liveth. So we went from human people doing human things to dead animals to once and for all. The very Son of God, the living God, sent His Son to die on the cross for whoever believes for their sins. Verse 18 says, Whereupon neither the first testament was dedicated without blood. For when Moses had spoken every precept of all the people according to the law, he took the blood of calves and of goats with water and scarlet wool and hyssop and sprinkled both the book and all the people, saying, This is the blood of the testament which God had enjoined unto you. Moreover, he sprinkled with blood both the tabernacle and all the vessels of the ministry. Now, most all things are by the law purged with blood. Without shedding the blood, there's no remission. That's God's requirement. That's the way God wanted it. you got to have death and blood to have forgiveness of sins. And again, it's what Jesus did. Verse 23 says, It was therefore ne necessary that the patterns of things in the heavens should be purified with these. But the heavenly things themselves which better sacrifice than these. For Christ is not entered into the holy place made with hands, which are the figures of the true, but into the heaven itself now to appear in the presence of God for us. Nor yet that he should offer himself often as a high priest entered in the holy place every year with blood of others. Then must he often have suffered since the foundation of the world, but now once in the end of the world hath he appeared to put away the sin by the sacrifice of himself. And is appointed unto men once to die, but after this the judgment. Here's the key verse again. So Christ once offered to bear the sins of many. And unto them that look for him shall he appear the second time without sin under salvation. Amen. It's just humbling to, to think about God's great plan. We, we can't live sinless. We, we can't help it. God gives us a free will. God gives us a, a heart that can choose or not to choose. And, and it, it's a struggle. How many of you struggle with, with feelings and things in your life and you don't want to do these things and we wind up doing them anyway? 
But folks, it's okay. Sin's never okay, but the forgiveness is okay. We, we've got it. God has made a way. Every day is new with God. Repent. Burden your heart. Hey, God, forgive me. Never forget to thank Jesus, though. Thank Jesus died to set us free. If you would turn with me again right here to the next chapter, 10, Hebrews 10. Again, this writer is setting aside all these old religious functions, all the Old Testament things. He's setting aside and giving us Jesus. Folks, there's a lot of religions. If you, if you get around, folks, that, that bind you with, with everything from speaking in tongues, that, that you lose your salvation, you you, you got to go to a preacher, a priest. and that, Those people believe, people follow that and follow it. Folks, follow this Bible. Don't, don't follow me. Follow this Bible. The Bible is our guide. Guide to God, to Jesus. Do what this Bible is teaching and preaching. Live it. Above all, a lot of this stuff we don't understand. I, I, I still mesmerize. I'll be reading stuff here over the years, and I say, whoa, I, 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 I've never seen that before. Wow. I finally realized what this means, and and folks, it's a never-ending study and learning session with God. Physically, mentally, seeing things, but especially reading the Bible. Chapter 10 says, For the law, having a shadow of good things to come, and not the very image of the things, can never, with those sacrifices which they offered year by year, continually make the comers therefore perfect. Then when they had not ceased to be offered, because the worshippers once purged should have no more conscience or an awareness of sins. But in those sacrifices, there's a remembrance again every year. For it is not impossible that the blood of bulls and goats should take away sins. Wherefore then, he that cometh into the world, he says, sacrifice and offering that would not be, but a body hast thou prepared me, and burnt offerings and sacrifices for sin that had no pleasure. Then said, I lo, I come, and the volume of this book is written of me to do thy will of God. He's quoting uh, Psalms 40 uh, verses. Again, he's setting aside. Quit focusing on the rituals. Quit focusing on the high priest. We got Jesus now. That's the content we're, we're studying and reading today. Verse 8. Above when he says sacrifice and offerings and burnt offerings and offering for sin that would us not. Neither had pleasure therein, which are offered by the law. Then said he, Lo, I come to the do thy will, O God. He taketh away the first, that he may establish the second. By the which we will we are sanctified through the offering of the body of Christ once and for all. Once and for all, people. Once and for all. What was happened on that cross. Verse 11 says, Every priest standeth daily ministering and offering of oftentimes the same sacrifices. <laughs> which can never take away sins. But this man, meaning Jesus, after he had offered one sacrifice for sins, forever sat down on the right hand of God, from henceforth expecting till his enemies be made his footstool. For by one offering he hath perfected forever them that are sanctified. Whereof the Holy Ghost also and his witness to us, for after that he said before, Jeremiah chapter 31 through Verses 33, 34, so again, he's quoting, This is the covenant that I will make with them after those days, saith the Lord. I will put my laws into their hearts and into their minds will I write them. And their sins and iniquities will I remember no more. Now where a remission of this, there is no more offering for sin. Folks, we don't need rituals at churches. We don't need a preacher to forgive you your sins. You need to get humble before God and say, God, I'm a sinner. Forgive me. Folks, it's, it's over with right there. When you do that, when you admit sin in your life, God, forgive me. you got a clean slate. Not what you do, what I do, it's because what Jesus Christ did a couple thousand years ago on the cross. That's God's requirements. That's what the Bible teaches us. Verse 19 uh, the confidence builder here. He says, Having therefore, brethren, boldness 
to enter the holiest by the blood of Jesus, by a new and living way, which he has consecrated for us through the veil, that is to say, his flesh, and having a high priest over the house of God, let us draw near with a true heart and full assurance of faith, having our hearts sprinkled from all evil conscience and our bodies washed with pure water. Let us hold fast the profession of our faith without wavering, for he is faithful that promise. And let us consider one another to provoke unto love and good works. If you would, just silently read verse 24 again, because this is the church thing here. It says, and let us consider one another to provoke unto love and to good works. That's why we're here, a brotherhood, a sisterhood, a familyhood. We're here at church, we're, we're believers in Christ. We're family. We're blood family of Jesus. The blood of Jesus. Verse 25. Not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together. As a manner of some is. But exhorting one another. And so much the more you see the day approaching. For if we sin willfully. After that we have received the knowledge of truth. There remaineth no more sacrifice for sins. But a certain fearful looking for a judgment and fiery indignation, which shall devour our adversaries. He that despised Moses' law died without mercy under two or three witnesses. Of how much sore punishment suppose ye shall be he that thought worthy who had trodden under the foot of the Son of God, and have counted the blood of the covenant wherein he was sanctified an unholy thing, he had done despite to the Spirit of grace. Hey, this is a warning to folks who put Jesus down lightly. Who put Jesus, as we, we say, died on the cross. and They don't want to have nothing to do with this, as we say, this type of religion. There's danger. There's a danger call here. Verse 30 says, For we know him that he said, Vengeance belongeth unto me, and I will recompense, saith the Lord. And again thy Lord shall judge the people. It is a fearful thing to fall into the hands of the living God. It's a fearful thing. We're dealing with the Creator God, people. Creator God who sent His Son to die for our sins. Creator God who loved His Son. Do not take that lightly. God expects us to respect that. He expects us to, to we struggle with our sins, yes, but we need to respect that love in our lives. Verse 32, but call to remembrance the former days in which after you were eliminated, you endured a great fight of afflictions. Partly whilst you were made a gazing stock, both by their reproaches and afflictions, and partly while you became companion of them, which were so used. Talking about persecution. Going away from the normal society things, the normal religious attitudes. and Folks, we are under assault now, 2022. Laws are changing that affects your lives, my lives as a Christian. Laws are becoming uh, ungodly laws. Folks, it's real. It's changing. Verse 34 says, For you have compassion of me and my bonds, and took joyfully the spoiling of your goods, knowing in yourselves that you have in a heaven a better and enduring substance. Cast not away, therefore, your confidence, which has great recompense or, or promise of reward. For ye have need of patience or persistence, that after ye have done the will of God, ye might receive the promise. For yet a little while, and he that shall come will come, and will not tarry. Now that the just shall live by faith, but if any man draw back, my soul shall have no pleasure in him. But we are not of them who draw back perdition or destruction, but of them that believe saving soul. He preached to a people, bent up in culture, who tied up their whole lives and, and lived just a cultural aspect, living by the law day and day and night, depending on preachers to, to do away with their sins. He's explaining the cross. The cross of Jesus. His blood washes away our sins. Last part of our message, uh, if you would, turn with me to 2 Corinthians. 2 Corinthians chapter 5. Now this is the Apostle Paul uh, proven. 
And he's trying to motivate us here as we will close with this. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, some of the things they highlight is the uh, earnestly seek the future with Jesus. In other words, uh, do we look for the hope of coming today? Do we live that every day? Do we, are we look in, or does it say, look to the east, Jesus is coming back? Do you live for Jesus, or do you every day you get up, go to work, see your family, and go to church once a week? Or are you living for yourself? You should live as a new creature, saved by grace. Second Corinthians chapter 5, it says, For we know that if our earthly house of this tabernacle was dissolved, we have a building of God, a, a house not made with hands, eternal in heavens. For in this we groan earnestly, desiring to be clothed upon with our house, which is from heaven. He's trying to get these people fired up, motivated. We need to be looking for the coming kingdom. It's coming. Verse 3 says it. If so be that being clothed, we shall not be found naked or without this, this physical body. For we that are in this tabernacle do groan, but being burdened, not for that we would be unclothed, but clothed upon, the mortality might be swallowed up in life. Now that he hath wrought for us, again, Jesus, self same thing to God, who also has given us in this earnest of the Spirit. Therefore we are always confident, knowing that whilst we are at home in the body, we are absent from the Lord, for we walk by faith and not by sight. And we are confident, I say, willing rather to be absent from the body, to be present with the Lord. We'll turn that around, are you? Are you looking for this hope we have of heaven? Are you walking by faith? Are you walking in the flesh? We do live in the flesh. We have a spiritual awakening we need to have and live it every day. Verse 9 says, Wherefore we labor that whether present or absent we may be accepted of him, for we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ, that everyone may receive the things done in his body according to what he has done, whether it be of good or bad. Knowing therefore this terror, it's not a horror terror, it's just a fearful thought that, hey, uh, we're going to have to have an accounting with Jesus about our life. We persuade men, but we are made manifest unto God, and I trust also made manifest in your consciousness. We command not ourselves again unto you, but give you an occasion to glory on our behalf. That you may be somewhat to answer them which glorify in appearance, not in heart. For whether we be beside ourselves, it is of God, whether we be sober, it's for your cause. For the love of Christ constraineth us, because we thus judge that if one died for all, then we're all dead. And that he died for all, that they which live should not henceforth live unto themselves, but unto him which died for them and rose again. Wherefore henceforth know we know man after the flesh, so that we have known Christ after the flesh, that now henceforth we know him no more. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things become new. Is that true in your life? You know, I struggle. Uh, I know we all struggle. Uh, I spent about six years of my youth as a prodigal son living in the world. And folks, I was so miserable. God was merciful. He'd send people my way, and, and I'd just get convicted, and I'd still be doing bad things, living a bad life. And, but God loved me. Jesus Christ loved me. The Holy Ghost kept speaking at me. Come back. Come back. Whatever you or I are struggling with today, God's saying, here it is. Here's the New Testament. Live by it. Live with Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. He died on that cross for your sins can't live sin free and live sin forgiven. Verse 18, and all these things are of God who has reconciled us to himself by Jesus Christ and has given us this ministry of reconciliation. To wit that God was in Christ reconciling the world unto him, not imputing their trespasses unto them, and has committed unto us the word of reconciliation. 
Now then, we are ambassadors for Christ, as though God did beseech you by us. We pray you in Christ's deed, be ye reconciled to God. This last verse will close. and Take this to heart. Remember this for, for Easter, for any day. For he hath made him to be sin for us, who knew no sin, that we might be made of righteousness of God in him. That's Jesus. That's what he did on the cross. God made it so easy for us. So why are you and I struggling every day? God made it easy. Repent. Acknowledge sin in your life. Struggle and try to do better. Study your Bible more. Ask people to pray for you. Whatever your situation is, God's got this. If any of you are lost, you don't have a place in time that you got Jesus in your heart, you need it now. Whether you come down here to this altar, you get in a private, quiet place at home, there's great men of God here, women of God that will pray with you. I'll pray with you. You need to get right before it's too late. If you're a prodigal son or daughter drifting in this world and you feel God tugging at you, get right. Today's the day. Only God can give you peace. Amen.